And uh, welcome, David. Thanks for coming on tonight. Dave is a real champion guy. He's been um, working on our farm for about the last two months. And uh, he's got a great story he's going to share tonight. And um, this is his first job in 25 years. He, he had another boss for 25 years. And um, he reckons his bo other boss was better than me. Who, who, who was the other boss, Dave? Almost. Oh, oh God. Oh, no, God. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he's, he's been... Uh, been working for God for 25 years. Yes. Yeah. So Dave's from PNG. So where where'd you grow up, David? Um, I I actually come from um, a place called uh, Goilala. It's in the mountains of Central Province, where is where the capital city Port Mosby is. And uh, it's in the mountains. It's cold. It's, it used to be cold every yeah uh, every day every night it's yeah cold. every night every night is cold mm, the tropical eh yeah and so I yeah I went to primary school there a, and then went to a, a only high school uh, and was taught by uh, mostly by the uh, the brothers and uh, the nuns from uh, yeah Australia. Oh right, so they, was, they taught you. Yeah, they taught Catholic us. Catholic school. Yeah, Catholic school. Yeah. So now uh, it's it's now uh, fully run by the Catholic yeah, Catholic school. Now it's gone to a secondary, and uh, they have. Taken in grade elevens and grade twelve. So mm. before it was a high school, I, I went there. Nineteen eighty eighty eight to nineteen ninety one. Mm. And what was it like growing up in a village in PNG? What 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 did you do? And was there work for your family? Uh well before before our villages were connected to Port Mosby, um, my father came to Port Mosby and uh, his sister's son was going to go to school and he had no school fees. So he went looking for a job and he went to work for one of the expatriates as a house tender. And so um, he probably saw that lifestyle that, you know, the Western uh, civilized lifestyle. So he really had that in mind that I have to send my kids to school. So I probably wasn't ready for school, but he forced me to go to school. And maybe I went when I was still six years Oh Lord. And so uh, my sister used to carry me to school and, and then carry me back to the house. And so uh, the village life, I really didn't um, go to experience because he sent me and he, he wanted me to uh, continue on school and get educated. And uh, yeah, so uh, from uh, from primary school, I went to uh, straight to uh, high school. Uh, but before that, my father, he, when he came back to the village, he became, a, uh, he went into business, like he used to buy, it, build a trade store and he used to uh, buy f store goods from Port Mosby and charter the plane and bring it to the village and he used to, uh, sell it in the back in the village. So I was in the village. I had an opportunity to eat uh, rice. Eat rice. Yeah, eat rice. And uh, <laughs> it was unfortunate for other kids because they would sometimes eat rice after six months or a year. But for me, it was 
Neil was there, the store was there. My father was looking after the store, he was selling. So, uh, rice, rice yeah. is a luxury. Rice in PNG is a luxury in the highlands. In the highlands. So, so what, what do you normally eat in, in the villages? Uh, normally, we used to eat pumpkin, sweet potato, banana, uh, yams, mm. and uh, taro. Yeah, we grow varieties of veggies. But rice was a luxury. But uh, if, if people come to visit you, yeah. If people come to visit you, if you're cooking the rice and, and the old village smells the rice, um, they will flood to your house. <laughs> they will come up with all kinds of stories and they'll come and tell stories waiting for you to cook your rice, save it, and then they'll eat together with you, with you your rice and then let's see if they can go back to their village and uh, houses and to their daily activities. Yeah, so it's a luxury. There will no grain of rice will be left on the plate. They will wipe it. <laughs> and if if without protein too, they will eat it because you know, uh, yeah. Luxury rice. Yeah, so rice is luxury. Yeah. 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 Not, not pork. Not pork. Not pork, pork chops. Yeah. Rice pork. Yeah. Bro. That's not luxury. That's every day. Every day we have pork. We we have uh, we look after pigs. Yeah, go hunting. Uh, water eels, um, possum, cassowary. Yeah, we go hunting and wild pig. Yeah. And so then you um you, you moved to Port Moresby. Yeah, I um uh, from um. I went to high school and then uh, they got select. They selected me to go to a college, and I went to a med and technical college uh, to do motor vehicle mechanic. Yeah, so I went and got went to college. That was back in 1992. 91, I graduated, and then from uh, high, high school. 92, I went to college and then um, the Department of Works. I don't know that they do that, but at the time, um, the companies used to go and uh, they used to interview students in the college and they used to uh, employ them. So I was uh, fortunate that the department, uh, Department of Works, the government department, they, the representative recruitment officer came and uh, they uh, interviewed. Yeah, he shortlisted uh, as the students and came and interviewed us. And uh, among them, I was one of them. So uh, yeah, I got them. I got uh, selected, employed by them, and uh, to do my apprenticeship. And so uh, from 93 to um, 99, normally it's five years, but at the time the government was sort of funds. So there was a bit of a delay on my contract to finish my uh, apprenticeship five years. So they extend, it was sort of an extension. So um, I started my apprenticeship in 1993 and then uh, I was still, into my last uh, block course before I would get my tradesman certificate. And then, um, yes, yeah, so in 1992, um, I was, when I was in college and back in PNG, there's a, uh, in the uh, tertiary college, uh, colleges and uh, universities, there's a group called Tessary Christian Fellowship, TSCF. So I was, I joined this group uh, in the college, Madden Technical College, and uh, uh, that was the first time when I started hearing about them preaching on uh, being born again, and was and I thought, and so I followed them, and they made altar calls. I went give my life to the Lord, but it was I wasn't really uh, there was no real transformation. 
in me, but I was following this group. And then uh, after college, I went uh, to start my uh, apprenticeship with the Department of Works uh, in 1993. And then in 1994, um, on our payday, uh, it was on a Wednesday we were drinking. It was in a Wednesday night. And then went on to Thursday, all day we were, we, we were drinking, all the apprentices and the uh, tradesmen. And then we went on to uh, yeah, Thursday night and on to Friday night. So like how many days and nights we were just drinking. Then uh, Friday, uh, during the day I was sleeping and I dreamt that my sister was, uh, uh, my small brother was sick and my sister was looking uh, after him at the hospital. And so I went to visit her, my small brother. That was in the dream. And uh, my sister got upset with me and she got an injection and she uh, injected me and I died in that dream. And it was really scary. So I got out of the, when I woke up. So what, what have you been drinking? I've been drinking beer. Oh, beer. Yeah, yeah. yeah sorry. Yeah, not water, not PNG no, no, no. water. Yeah. It's beer. Yeah. yeah. So, so I I was really that dream really disturbed me, so I went and uh, I knew it was someone who was a Christian. Uh, so I went straight to him and I told him I So I, what were you thinking about? What was disturbing you? I I'm going to die. Uh oh it was like that dream really really um, made me think that, oh, if I, something strange is going to happen to me and I'm, maybe someone is going to kill me or I'm going to die. And so uh, I went and uh, I really wanted to uh, find out about that dream, what was the meaning or the interpretation of the dream. So I went and asked one of the friends and he said, he said, uh, your drinking mates, one of them is going to poison you. He's going to, the next time when you are drinking with them, they're going to put um, a poison in your beer and you'll drink it and you, that will kill you. And so I said, oh, no, I, I've, I'm not ready to die. I've got to find someone to <laughs> lead me to the Lord. Uh, because um, back at the TSC, TCF, uh, TSCF, people were, uh, I used to hear the sermons, people preached and um, I knew that there was hell and there was heaven. There was heaven and if I was, I was not ready, uh, I knew that I was drinking and I'm not, my life is not right. So um, I went and gave my, and went and to this friend who was a Christian that I knew and uh, he, I, I told him my dream and he said, oh, yes, that's what your friend interpreted. The dream was right. That's what is going to happen to you. And he said, uh, he asked me, you want to give your life to Jesus? And I said, just pray for me. I'm ready. So he prayed for me on a Friday night. And on, on the Saturday night, uh, he took me to his kitchen and he said, I want to pray for you that you be baptized with the Holy Spirit. And we went to his kitchen and he said, lift up your hands. And so I, we went and I lifted my hands and I, I, I didn't know about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And I didn't, I haven't, like I didn't know how to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, but I just followed the, what he was saying. So he said, just lift up your hands and close your eyes and we just stay. And then I felt uh, a coldness coming down my hand. And, and the next minute, I f he said, that's it, you're filled with the Holy Spirit. And then he played one of the songs, Looking for a City, from uh, Jim Schweiger. The whole night I cried. <laughs> I cried all night. <laughs> and he just left that song, you know, playing on that uh, radio. And it was repeating, that only song was repeating and, and I've been crying all night. I couldn't sleep. 
And the next morning, I, just, uh, I got up early and asked them, where is that church? And they said, oh, the church is dead. That's where that place. That, so I got ready and I went there. And um, there was no musician, so I knew a bit about playing guitar. So I went and got the guitar and I played at the church. <laughs> and um, yeah, that was on Sunday. And then on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, I went with a pastor of the church to a house fellowship. And the pastor got up and said, uh, David, you want to preach? Are you going to preach in the house fellowship? And I, I, I thought to myself, I just gave my heart to the Lord on Saturday. And on Thursday, now you're telling me to preach. But I didn't say no. I said, okay, that's all right. So I asked him to give me his Bible, and I got his Bible, and I, when I flipped open, I saw this verse where it says, um, do not partake of the table of the Lord and partake of the table of the demons, or you might provoke the Lord to jealousy. And so I preached that scripture. I just read it, and then that's it. But after preaching, uh, sharing the scriptures, I felt the joy of preaching the gospel. I've never felt, and I have hard to describe, there's no words to describe the feeling. And so every Saturday, I would go down to the market in um, Manus province, uh, Lorengau market. I would go down to the market and put the speaker and preach to the people there. Yeah, so I've been I used to just go preach every Saturday. Every and then whatever I had that opportunity, I preached to anyone and everyone. And even at the workplace too. Uh one time in the early in the morning I went and I shouted and everyone like what's happening and I started preaching to all the bosses and all my workmates in the workplace and they Oh, some of them, like, they they talk, they went and hide, eat them, hide themselves in the <laughs> this, you know, Because some of them were not living right, so they just, they, were, they, were, they got scared of hearing the word of God, so they went and hide, eat themselves. And then from there, I used to, every morning, I used to preach at the workplace. And then uh, Saturdays, I used to go down and preach at the market. Yeah, and so uh, that was back in 1904, and from that, since that time, I've been just preaching. To yeah, and and uh, at, at one point, you just said, you're not going to work for men anymore, you're going to work for God? Yeah, um, then uh, in 99, um, they said, okay, David, you are going to, the department said that you are going to go and do your last uh, extension course, block course in this college, uh, Port Mosby Technical College, and uh, for eight weeks. And after that, you, you will um, get your treatment certificate. Um, I went there and, uh, oh, there was eight weeks of course, but I did just cover two weeks. And uh, after two weeks, one day, uh, we went for lunch. The old students went for lunch. And uh, that feeling, that conviction to go full-time preaching the gospel was so strong. I had been battling that for uh, back for about six months and I could not hold it. And then I was at college, but I wasn't concentrated. And it was so strong that uh, lunchtime, when the students, the water, the bear ran and the students were going back to that class, I came down, I came down to, and then got on the bus and I said, God, it's you and me now. And so that's it. I went and called my bosses in, uh, in Manus and told them that 
sorry, I'm not completing my blog course and I'm not going to be getting my tradesman certificate. And um, um, I'm done with this apprenticeship team. I'm going to be preaching the gospel. So uh, I'm putting a resignation and uh, that's it. So uh, from 99 up to now, after 25 years, yeah, I'm here at uh, Desert Farms. It's your fir first, first pay, pay job. Yeah. It's your first pay <laughs> job in so, over 20 years. Yeah, it's been over 20 years. So, uh, and he's doing mechanical work. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, so um, then, uh, then the devil put that fear. I was about to leave and that, that devil put that fear in me and uh, said, oh, you will... Who is going to support you? You are not waking, you know, all this. And then I heard the Lord say, God is a big God. That's the, uh, that's when I heard that God is a big God, that's it. It, it gave me that confidence that, yes, I'm not going, I, I don't have a paid job. I know there's no means of support for me, but uh, God is a big God. God will look after me in everything. So. And he has? Yeah, he, he has been looking after me. So you, you run out of food sometimes? Mm, uh, no. No? Sometimes, yes. Um, sometimes when I run out of food, I say it's a chance for me to fast. <laughs> so it's like a forced fasting. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, for the last 25 years, I've seen a lot of things God it was a step of faith. Uh, just stepped out and uh, yeah, turn and four. That conviction, the edge to uh, uh, come to Australia as a missionary. Uh, was, uh, before that, uh, I used to tell, uh, jokingly tell the young uh, men I used to uh, hang around with and we used to preach the gospel together with. I used to tell them. Uh, if I want to be a missionary, uh, America would be a first, uh, first country on my list and Australia will be the last on my list. So I would, I'd rather go to America or than to go to Australia. So any other country I can go, but Australia would be the last one. And God changed that around and God put that conviction that burden for me to come to Australia. And so, um, in nine, 2004, I wanted to come to Australia. And uh, I knew that there was Christians who used to come to Australia. They had Christian uh, friends, they had connections. I asked them, please, I have a conviction uh, from the Lord to go as a missionary to Australia. Can any of you connect me to uh, churches or Christians in Australia? I want them to write, uh, send me a sponsor, uh, sponsor me to go to Australia. But none of them uh, connected. Give me a contact or connected me with a church or a denomination or any Christian. So in 2004, 2005, I said, God, I prayed and I told God, God, 2005, I'm going to commit this year and I'm going to pray. I'm going to fast. And I'm going to pray and I'm going to fast for one thing. And that is that I am going to master your voice. I'm going to... You are going to train me. You are going to teach me how to hear your voice. That when I hear your voice, I know it is you talking. When I know when the devil is speaking, I know it is the devil speaking. When it is my own mind, I know it is me. It is my own mind that is thinking. So I started this program that every afternoon from 2 o'clock afternoon, to seven o'clock in the evening, I pray, I used to pray. I used to go up in the mountain and I used to pray. Two o'clock, three o'clock, four o'clock, five o'clock, six o'clock, seven o'clock. So it's about six hours of prayer. 
I used to go up there and pray. I used to pray in tongues, just pray in tongues. And then I've, I've uh, fasted Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays. I just fast. And then I said, and then I said, okay, then I've started training myself to hear the voice of God or to follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. So I would say, okay, today I'm going to go to this particular place. When is the right time to leave the house and go down to the bus stop? And I would know that bus will be coming at that time. So, uh, and then uh, I, would, I would say, I'll go to this town. But when I'm going to the bus and I would, and I would feel like, um, I would feel like uh, there is no uh, excitement or the joy of going to that place, or I did not have the peace to go to the place that I planned. Then I would say, okay, God, where do you want, where else do you want me to go? So I started training myself. And then going towards 2006, June, uh, there was a time when my uh, brother-in-law, his payday, he asked me, David, what do you want me to buy for you? Because this is my payday. And I said, um, from, I, I wasn't, I wasn't praying for that thing, but for somehow it just popped up in my mind and I said, I want you to buy me a little radio, NL radio. I want to hear the Christian music. I tune into a Christian radio and I want to hear the Christian music. And so he bought me that radio. Every morning I used to put it on and I used to hear the Christian radio and all that. One morning when I got up, I had this announcement. They were making an announcement and they said, oh, there's going to be an all prayer assembly in Kent, Australia. Whoever Christians in PNG, you want to go to Australia and attend this conference, come and register your names. I felt something jump in me. It was like, and then I, it was like Eliz, uh, Mary going and visiting Elizabeth and John the Baptist lived in me. I felt something like that and I said, I am already in Australia. All my hard work of trying to ask him for people to give me the context and all that is the past. Now I'm already in Australia. <laughs> so I went and registered my, uh, my, my register. And then that's it, uh, 2006, uh, June. I can remember the date, the date 2006, June, uh, 10th of June, 2006. I landed in Cairns. Mm. And a miracle happened. Uh, at the airport in Cairns, a white car came and stopped. And the driver jumped out and he said, you, come and get in the car. And I looked around and there was no one at the back. And I said, and, I, and, and he said, hey, you. And I looked and he said, you, you, come and get in the car. I went and get in the car and he drove me to the place where the conference is, and I didn't meet him again. He drove away, and that's it. <laughs> and um, yeah, so since that time, I've been coming to Australia, and um, yeah, God has been providing food. He has been providing me with tickets. Uh, I don't know how much I've already spent on on ticket. Maybe thirty thousand kina. <laughs> uh, but, but that's all for the kingdom of God. So uh, uh, God is good. Yeah. yeah that's good. And so um, thank you. And in answer to uh, the question that Paul asked me, that knowing the voice of God really changed a lot of things in my life. And uh, if we as Christians can hear the voice of God and be led by the Holy Spirit every day, we will see a lot of things God doing in our lives. We'll discover a lot of things. The answer to our prayer is just the leading. It's just there. It's just uh, in the leading of the Holy Spirit. 
So I've seen God lead me to the answer to my prayers as by looking at many of you. Uh, you're already there, but I'm sharing just my experience. Some of you have been working with the Lord for many years, and uh, I'm humbled by sharing my testimony. And thank you, Paul, for bringing me here and um, interviewing me and sharing my story. But uh, all of us is our stories, and uh, it's for only one man's story, and his name is Jesus. Uh, we tell his story from uh, from our own personal lives of what he has done uh, to us. So uh, God is good. Yeah. Praise God. 